put uh, I'll just put this right here. Ah, RC four wheel drive Earth Digger two. You guys have seen me work with this. This is a forty two hundred uh, version. Uh, it's one point five. It's not the first version. It's the second version. You guys have seen me go over this today. Except I have a box. I finally get to do an upgrade on my excavator. I've been waiting for this. Now I have two things in the box. I'm only going to do one of them today because I've done neither one of these before and you guys are going to be learning with me. Now I know some of you guys have never seen this machine uh, on my channel before because maybe you're new. Uh, the Earth Digger 4200 XL is actually on my channel right now. Uh, in the month of December 2013, I did a whole overview of the hydraulics and how this whole big thing works. <laughs> A lot of people say to me, this thing needs to have a little bit of weight added. They actually don't know that it weighs about 43 pounds. Very heavy, but the hydraulics on it, the pump, everything like that, it has 290 PSI from the pump and it has 33 pounds of downforce. That means it can drag itself around just like a full scale one. You can see how it lifts itself up. Easily. Okay, so that's not why I'm here today. I'm here today to do a first swap. Now, I do have this with me. This is the main one we'll be doing today. We'll put this box down. Ooh. This is a fairly heavy duty bucket that it comes with. Everything is made of aluminum. It's all machined, it's very nice. Ugh. It's very heavy. It's got lots of digging power. Can it dig into solid clay? Uh, it cannot, you know, because there's only so much downforce something can have uh, if the ground is super hard. But the teeth on it are actually fairly neat to look at. You know, I might as well get it close to you right now. Come on, this will help. That's about right. Okay, the teeth on here, this bucket. Here, let's get you in closer. Come on, get in here. Don't be shy. Get my big face in there. This bucket right here is uh, all welded together. These teeth, I haven't had one break off. The bucket is actually as wide as my palm, just a little bit wider, for example. No other way. There we go. Same with the actual scoop. Let's see if I can move it here. This scoop, for example, uh, has quite a bit of depth to it, right? So about a finger full, <laughs> finger length. Uh, it's an incredible machine uh, and very strong. I've dug lots on it. We do have some paint scrape. You would expect to have paint scrape on there. Uh, when you're digging in the rocks and the dirt, I've done some uh, river digging. My friends, it's only loose because there are some Allen uh, or some uh, set screws on the inside of the bucket holding it onto the arm. Let's back out a little bit. Woo! Perfect. Okay, you can see me in the shadow. I'm moving in. Uh, oh, oh, uh, uh. <laughs> okay, so I know you can't see it. You can barely hear me, but here are these screws on the inside of the bucket. Now I'm going to get you guys in much closer and we're actually going to install the heavy duty bucket that's now available at the RC four wheel drive website. Okay. Check this out. I wanted to get this in the studio for you guys to see the difference. Hey, I need a more heavy duty digger as well. This is slightly more heavy. It's certainly more thick in the sides. Uh, it has extra strength. 
Oh, huge difference, dudes. Huge difference. So there you go. All the teeth uh, now can be replaced as well just by undoing these, popping the new teeth back on. And these are much stronger. They're not like these little grub screws that are in here. Well, they're not grub screws. They're hex screws, but still. Uh, these have round heads on them. These actually have heads that protrude. So I wonder if they actually had an issue with them breaking off. Uh, I didn't have that problem, but today we're going to replace the scoop. A lot of people ask, is this actually bigger? Well, I can say that size wise, check it out. It's basically the same size. It looks slightly larger. The one thing I noticed big time, we'll turn this back on again. Out goes the bucket. Okay, with this, the teeth are substantially longer. Substanti Sorry, I'm floating in the side, I know, but I want this to be about this, really. You can see the bucket is substantially uh, more beefy. Now, how's the hydraulics on this? How is it going to run? Is it going to take more pressure? I imagine the answer is yes. I haven't tried it before, but I'm certainly willing to give it a shot. Uh, I never really mention prices in my videos. I try not to because these videos are kind of timeless, but prices change all the time. Uh, I can say just over a hundred bucks right now for this new metal shovel. Uh, you know, prepared. It could be more, could be less, depending on the time that you're watching this film. But I got to tell you, that is pretty awesome. My hand disappears right in the middle of it. That is totally what she said. Okay, so here we go. Good. The tracks. Let's turn it around here. There we go. So, I guess what I'm gonna have to do is really kind of look at it here. I see that it's just a couple of C-clips. Uh, and I imagine it's the uh, bolts that go straight through swapping this out I'll get you guys a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna rookie myself through this Hopefully it works out <laughs> Okay, a couple of tools I've grabbed from the pouch whether I'm gonna need them or not uh, needle nose pliers clink clink Angled needle nose pliers Small slotted screwdriver and for some reason a hook I'm thinking these C-clips might come out a little bit better with a hook. I don't know. We're going to see though. I can see I can get, it's a fairly fine point on the hook. And I can see I can start to just kind of wiggle these away. Oh yeah, these are nice and easy to come out with the hook. Check it out. One C-clip. Can't see it against my hand. There you go. One C-clip. No problem. I'm going to go ahead and get in there and see if I can get out the rest. Okay, I'm going to set my magnetic tray, <laughs> not on, not on the shovel, just off to the side to hold those C-clips so I don't lose them. And you know what? I bet you that one that I took off, I do not need to remove. So I'll just slap that back on there for a second. Do, 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 do. If I was going to be removing the whole angled arm there, I would, but I don't. So the one I do need is this one. Get my thumb right in the way. Got to apply a little bit of pressure as well. Try not to stab yourself. Nice and slow. Make sure to use the, the hook away from you. Try not to apply too much pressure so the clip goes zinging away and you can never find it again. There we go. I'm actually just going to use some mousse slick on this. This is a silicone spray from Cow RC. Just want to clean up this area a little bit. I'm using a silicone uh, spray simply to help it all come away. Nothing abrasive here. All right, there we go. Much cleaner. I'm going to do it on the other side. Let's remove those C-clips on the back of the shovel the same way. There we are. One and the other one. Kind of flipped around, giving me a little bit of hassle and here goes the clip. <laughs> Zing! And I never found it again. Don't want to stab yourself with the pick, of course. Just kind of block it and pull it. There we go. There. Done. And clink. Now this will have the pins in it, so I'm just going to remove one pin. There it is right there. Just going to try and get that Second pin, you'll see it's just hinged there. 
Now maybe it needs a little coercion to come out of there. I'm still gonna give it a little bit more mousse slick here to kind of loosen everything up. Got a little bit of dirt and grime in there. I don't think any hydraulic fluid, uh, even though the rams do leak a very small amount. I've never really noticed a performance decrease in it. Come on now, might need a little bit of coaxing. Let's take those needle nose, no. Nope. Yeah, good, 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 good. There we go, just a little bit of coercion. Come on. The moose like definitely helps. Uh, something heavier. Maybe I can use this, I can. There we go, just to get that cotter pin removed. There we go, bucket comes off. Fairly simple too. Okay, so the centerpiece that runs through. Hmm, neat. I love mechanics. You know, I can't be a full scale heavy duty mechanic, but I could certainly work on these RCs uh, and uh, do it all in miniature. Just too cool. Okay, so I'm cleaning up all the areas. I wanna kinda get it all cleaned out of junk and debris. Good time to do a little maintenance here. Get everything all lubed up again. Especially because right now at the time of this filming, it's winter, I've been running this in the snow. You know, a little bit of silicone spray or silicone spray, however you pronounce it in the part of the world you're in, uh, goes a long way in protecting your gear against rust and, you know, different corrosive, uh, you know, things in nature just break stuff down, especially metals. Now, this is a little bit dirtier, but that's all right. Refit it there. Put this little spacer here. We'll just kind of clean that up. The middle spacer back in there. Okay. Get that lined up flush. Same with the bucket. Geez, all the heavy duty mechanics right now are watching this. <laughs> Envious of the fact we can pick up this bucket, which would normally be, you know, super heavy. You need extra, you know, you need to have skill on on pushing the arm down and getting it all loaded up. And uh, here we are lifting it up with our hands, you know, that's pretty neat right there. Okay, so let's get this cotter pin started. I know people are like, it's not a cotter pin. Uh, right. That's nice and light, just trying to line it up. Slides through okay. Just need it to go through, right. Come on, you can do this. Patience, Bidotchka, you can do this. Yes, to all the people out there that don't know me personally, that is my last name, Bidotchka. <laughs> there we go. Super slippery. Okay, it slides back and forth, okay? So let's actually try to get it in from this side. Is it gonna go? There we go, yeah, I got it. I just need to take that middle spacer now. Come on. Of course, when it's hanging, it puts pressure on different areas, makes it harder to push through. Ah! <laughs> All right, patience. I know it's driving the viewers crazy right now. There we go. Ha ha ha! Bingo, bango, bongo. Gotcha. Okay, now the C-clips are still in good shape. I didn't bend them. I didn't have to use any pliers. That uh, little hook there was definitely a help. We'll use that hook just to actually push down. Is it gonna work? No, nope. maybe I'll use the slotted screwdriver without stabbing myself. Make sure my hand is free. There we go, that is in place. That C-clip is done. Same do it on the other side. Now I could use these pliers, for example, just to squeeze it and clamp it down, which I'll do on this side right here. Clamp, that was easy. And then of course we have these arms right here with the other pin. Let's make sure it's all lubed. Ah, a lot easier than you guys thought, hey? Let's get this in here. There's one arm. Getting her through, here's the spacer, right? There's another spacer to go in. Make sure everything's nice and tight. And through to the other side, piece of cake. 
Yes, I'll shine it all up. I'll shine it all up. Get her done. Here's what I mean about these. Now, if you're careful and you do it right, it won't fly across the room on you. Some people prefer to work with C-clips over a small rug. So if it does fall on the floor, you can actually uh, recover it without having it roll away on you. There we go. Perfecto. And then of course on the other side. I love the look of this shovel compared to the other one. Um, here, let me get on this final C-clip. Done. This is all in place to make sure. Done, there, that's on there properly. Nice and solid. Sweet. I'll walk around the back. Dun, 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 dun. Let's plug it in. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Now, we do have a little bit of oil in the shovel, but of course, just like anywhere, if you're installing a brand new shovel on an oily machine, you're gonna have to shine it up afterwards if you want it to look good. There we go. Turn on the hydraulics with this little switch right here. Click. Control the bucket right here. Very nice. All right, back out, I hear ya. Turn that off, back out so you guys can see it. There we go. Turn it back on. I love these new teeth. <laughs> I love it. There we go. Stick it. Stick it. Yeah. Oh. Stick it. <laughs> it's like he's wearing a helmet, an army helmet. <laughs> Help me, I can't get it off, it's sticking to me! Ah! All right. Ugh. What's the next upgrade? Well, you darn well know that this thing right here, give me this. This machine is super, super slow. It has plenty of torque, uh, but moving forward and backwards, turning itself around, for example, pretty darn slow. This is maximum speed. But keep in mind, I said it's all metal and it weighs 43 pounds just by itself with the stock bucket. My friends, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to install the brushless upgrade kit for the tracks. I know you couldn't see it, uh, part number VVVS0040, Earth Digger Excavator Brushless Track Upgrade Kit. I don't even know if I'm going to do that on camera. I've never done that before either, so I don't know if I'm doing it right. But these brush motors are coming out. Brushless all the way, baby. Let's give it some power.